Hi, I'm Douglas, and I'm a velvet worm that's part of the phylum Lonicophora. All of the organisms in this phylum are velvet worms. Although we may be small and cute, we are predatory protozoans with a long history, so don't underestimate us. We are pretty special creatures, and some of our unique features include our long evolutionary history and defensive mechanisms, as well as our interesting ways of gathering food. Fossil records have shown that we are most likely the descendants of the Cambrian Labophodians, which existed over 50 million years ago. They look like this. We are also named the Panarthropods, the closest relatives to the arthropods, which include organisms like spiders, butterflies, crabs, and crayfish. Today we can grow from half a centimeter to more than 15 centimeters or 6 inches. The name Onychophora in Greek literally means to carry claws or claw bears. This name describes our legs. Each leg has a mini claw in it that allows us to stealthily crawl around our environment. Depending on how big we are, we can have anywhere from 13 to 43 pairs of legs that allow us to crawl over all kinds of terrain. I live in moist environments or places with high humidity. I'm not aquatic, but fossils also suggest that my ancestors used to live and swim in marine environments. I prefer darker places, such as rainforests or caves. This is because I am phototactic, which means I am an animal whose body naturally avoids and moves away from the sunlight. Also, I am not able to live in completely dry environments because velvet worms are not able to control our body's water loss. Velvet worms are sexual organisms. You can tell the difference between males and females because the female is larger than the male. A male will leave sperm on a female's skin and then it will diffuse through her skin into the ovaries. Some worms lay eggs, but most give live birth. The females are fertilized only once in their lifetime, but they can give birth to 1 to 23 babies a year. The young don't look any different physically and just look like smaller adults. We velvet worms take about 17 months to become fully mature, and our lifespan is only 6 years long. For our food, we usually eat other small insects, but the way we gather and eat our food is quite unique. We have glands called slime papillae before our legs start. We are small predators, so when we need to capture prey, we often spend a long time quietly stalking them. When we finally get close enough, we shoot the slime at our prey, and the slime acts like an indestructible glue, holding the animal down. Then we go in and inject the creature with digestive saliva, which basically liquefies our insides. That's my dinner. The slime also acts as a self-defense mechanism. If I'm in a sticky situation, I can shoot the slime at another predator to stick them in place while I have time to get away. This is the phylogenetic tree that is based on separate data matrices of different phyla. Annelida, Periphera, Anthropoda, Echinoderm, Cnidaria, Mollusca, and Chordata. These phyla include sea stars, sponges, anthropods, earthworms, sea cucumbers, squid, and bony fish respectively. From this tree, it can be said that the crayfish, part of the phylum Anthropoda, is the organism that is most related to me. This second tree is the tree that compares the similarities between me and the other organisms based on our actual DNA sequences. From this tree, it can be shown that the mollusca is the phylum that I am most closely related to. As you can see, the two trees are different because the first tree, which was constructed from the data matrices, shows the onychophora is most closely related to the anthropoda. While the second tree, which was constructed from the 16S RNA sequences, shows Onychophora was most closely related to the Mollusca. However, after Mollusca, the next closest relative is Arthropoda. Based on an article by Nicholas Strasfeld and others, organisms from Onychophora have been around since the Cambrian period and most likely originated from lower forms of arthropods. The two trees we generated are different from those in the article because they include marine life, while those in the article focus more on worms and insects. However, they are all similar because other pods are among the closest relatives to Onychophora. This article's phylogenetic tree shows Onychophora is most closely related to Chelicerata, which is a major subdivision of phylum Anthropoda, which includes crabs and spiders. Therefore, based on all three of these trees, we can determine that the phylum Anthropoda is my closest relative evolutionarily. Well, that is all about me. Thank you all for listening to what I am and what I do. I'd also like to thank LMU and Biology 111 Lab for having me and for providing all the materials for Mallory, Kevin, and Ivy to put together this presentation. Any questions?